In this video, we will discuss uh, paper one of 2020, and we are going to start with question one. Question 1.1 says, solve for x. And the first question is, x squared minus 6x is equal to 0, and it only counts two marks. So we have x squared minus 6x equals to 0, and what we can do is take out a common factor. We can see that x is the variable that occurs in both terms, so the common factor is x. And if I take out x in the first term, I have an x that remains. And in the second term, if I remove x, it is minus 6. And that is equal to 0. Now I can see that x is equal to 0. So I place x equal to 0. Or I can say x minus 6 is equal to 0. And therefore, x is equal to 6. The next question says, solve for x for x squared plus 10x plus 8 equal to 0. Correct to two decimal places. Now this hints towards the quadratic formula. So I have x squared plus 10x plus 8 equal to 0. And on the formula sheet, you'd find the quadratic formula. Now be careful when you substitute into the quadratic formula. The b value is negative, so it's negative 10 plus minus. Then I have b squared, so it is 10 squared minus 4 times a. Now the a value is 1 because there's nothing in front of the x, so it's a 1. And the c value is the constant, which is 8. Over... 2 times 1. Now if I place it in my calculator, I'll find two possible values. So it is negative 10 plus the square root of 68 over 2. Or x would be negative 10 minus the square root of 68 over 2. But remember the question said correct to two decimal places. So x would be equal to negative 0 0.88 or x would be equal to negative 9.12. And our third question is solve for x for 1 minus x in brackets times x plus 2 smaller than 0. So I have 1 minus x and x plus 2 smaller than 0. It's already factorized, so you do not need to multiply out. And you can find two critical values. So that means I place both brackets equal to 0. So 1 minus x equals to 0 means that x would be equal to 1. And x plus 2 equal to 0 would mean that x is equals to negative 2. So if I draw it on the number line, I have a negative 2 and 1 on the x-axis. But now we need to be careful. We just need to multiply out the x's to see that it's negative x squared. And that determines the shape of the parabola. So remember, the value in front of the x squared tells us whether or not this is a smiley or a frowny graph. And this is negative, so the graph would be frowny or an upside down parabola. So that means it will go through these critical points. Now how you interpret this information? If part of the graph is above the number line which represents the x-axis, then it is bigger than zero. And the parts that are smaller than zero are below the x-axis. So this statement says smaller than zero. So it is for the values of x where the graph is below the x-axis. And I can see that the graph is below the x-axis for 
x smaller than negative 2, meaning from negative 2, I need to move in the left direction. And for x bigger than 1, meaning from 1, I need to continue going right. And the more I go right, the more negative this graph would be. In the next question, we have solve for x, where it is a square root x plus 18 equals to x minus 2. Now, in order for us to solve x, we need to square on both sides. And in this case, we can do it because the square root is isolated, meaning it's alone on the left. So in other questions, you might have something like um, x plus 18 and the square root minus x equals to 2. So if you have something like that, you would need to transpose the x first and get the square root alone on one side. Once you have done that, you can square on both sides. So the square root squared is x plus 18. And in x minus 2 squared, remember, this means x minus 2 times x minus 2. And if I multiply out, that is x squared minus 4x plus 4. Now, I need to write this in standard form. That means I'll bring over the x and I'll bring over the 18. So it'll be x squared minus 4x minus the x that we bring over because when we transpose, the sign changes. So it'd be minus 5x. Then it is plus 4 minus 18 because the sign would change as well. So 4 minus 18 is negative 14. Now we can either use the quadratic formula or factorize. I'd find that factorization is easier. So it'll be x and x. Then 7 and 2 to create 14. These are the factors of 14. And it'll be negative 7 and plus 2 which will help me create the negative 5 in the middle. Therefore, x can be negative 2 or x can be equal to 7. But before you can accept this as the final answer, you would need to substitute these values into the original equation. So on your calculator, you would substitute negative 2 plus 18, and you would see that that is the square root of 16, which is 4. And if I substitute on the right-hand side, I have negative 2 minus 2, which is equal to negative 4. Now, these two values are not equal to each other. That means that x cannot be equal to negative 2, because if I substitute on the left and on the right, it doesn't produce equal values. Now let's check the 7. That will be 7 plus 18 and the square root which is 25 and the square root then is 5 and 7 minus 2 which is 5. Now I can see that both of these values are the same meaning the left hand side is equal to the right hand side. Therefore x is equal to 7. The next question is solve simultaneously for x and y. So we have two equations, x plus y equal to 3. That's our first equation. And our second equation is 2x squared plus 4xy minus y equals to 15. That's our second equation. Now I see I can rewrite the first equation. And in this case, I'm going to choose to isolate the y. So meaning I will transpose the x. The reason why I would do that is if I look at the second equation, if I were to have x alone, I would sit with 2x squared. 
So it will be 3 minus y squared times 2, which is quite complicated multiplying out. And I can see also in the second equation, the y is not squared. So it might be simpler just to substitute y in the second equation. So the second equation is 2x squared plus 4xy minus y equal to 15. Now I would replace y with 3 minus x. So it is 2x squared plus 4x times 3 minus x minus y, which is 3 minus x, equal to 15. And notice I'm doing substitution in brackets. So you need to remember brackets. The reason why brackets are important is it will help me to multiply out correctly in the middle. And at the end here, it will help me to see a sign change because negative 1 times negative x become plus x. If I didn't have the brackets there, I would have it as minus x, which is incorrect. So if I multiply out, I have 2x squared plus 4x times 3, which is 12x. Then 4x multiplied with negative x, which is negative 4x squared. Then negative 1 times 3, that is negative 3. Negative 1 times negative x, which is plus x, and that is equals to 15. Now, if I rewrite this in standard form, I would add up like terms. So if I add up like terms, I have 2x squared minus 4x squared, so that is negative 2x squared. Then 12x plus x which is plus 13x and then minus 3 minus 15 because I'll transpose the 15 so it is minus 18 equal to 0 so now I have it in standard form now my normal practice is to rewrite this where the x square is a positive value so I'll divide everywhere by negative 1 so it is 2x squared and if I divide here by negative 1, it will be minus 13x. And negative 18 divided by negative 1 is plus 18. And 0 divided by negative 1 is 0. Now some of you might be more comfortable to use the quadratic equation, and that's fine. I'm going to factorize. So it will be 2x and x. Then here it will be minus 9 and negative 2. So minus 9 times negative 2 will give me plus 18. Negative 9x minus 4x will give me negative 13x in the middle. Therefore, x would be equals to 4.5 or x would be equal to 2. So here, how I get the 4.5, it is 2x minus 9 equal to 0. Then I transpose the 9 and divide by 2. So it's 9 over 2, or 4.5. Now we already know that y is equal to 3 minus x. So when x is 4.5, it will be 3 minus 4.5, which is negative 1.5. Or if x is 2, it will be 3 minus 2, so y would be equal to 1. The last question in question 1 is, if n is the largest integer for which n to the power of 200 is smaller than 5 to the power of 300, determine the value of n. So we want the largest whole number for which this statement is true. So I have n raised to the power of 200, smaller than 5 raised to the power of 300. So what I would want to do is simplify n to the power of 1. But I simply cannot subtract 199 um, in the exponent and do the same on the right hand side. Rather, 
I would need to manipulate the exponent by dividing. So I divide n to the power of 200 by 200. That will create n to the power of 1. And what I do on the left in the exponent, I would do on the right. So it's 5 to the power of 300 divided by 200, which is 5 to the power of 1 and a half. And 5 to the power of 1 and a half would be 11.18. Therefore, n would be equals to 11. Because remember, I need to answer the largest integer value. So that means I would ignore the decimal values.